Hello there, and welcome to another episode of my New Japan Ranking Save. I'm going to be open here. This is about to become the main save for the sheer fact that I don't feel comfortable, given everything that's gone on recently with the edicts in WWE, I don't quite feel comfortable, even though I'm rebranding, I don't quite feel comfortable booking a company with such commercial malpractices. It's a shame. I will keep booking I'll probably keep booking it offline and if I get to the point where I'm comfortable with it again I will bring the series back eventually probably but for the time being this new Japan save is going to become the main save on this channel date that there will be daily videos of new Japan we have of course on Chapman FM my second channel we're going to have daily or alternatively daily football manager content I hope you guys understand that. If you were here for the WWE content and the new train content isn't really your thing, I apologise. It's just I'm at the point I don't feel comfortable booking and promoting a company which has such malpractices in the workplace. The So but let's move on from that. We are doing King of Pro Wrestling and New Japan Pro Wrestling today. Well, it's the biggest show I think we've done so far. No IWGP heavyweight title match, but we have an Intercontinental Championship match, a never open weight tag team championship match, and some massive singles matches on this card. And one IWGP junior heavyweight title match as well. But we're kicking off with the junior heavyweight tag team titles as Suzuki Goon defeat Pen the Lucha Brothers when El Desperado pins Penta El Zero M with a flying neck breaker drop to make their second defense of their junior tag team titles. I was contemplating putting the titles on the Lucha Brothers, but I don't quite think they're established fully in New Japan yet, and the Japanese audience wouldn't appreciate that. that. Okay, 78 rating though, good stuff. Then we've got IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Championships, as the team of Volta and Yuji Nagata challenge Dangerous Techers, Zack Sabre Jr. and Tai Chi. And it's the champions who retain their titles when Zack Sabre Jr. pins Yuji Nagata with a European clutch to make defence number two of the IWGP Tag Team Champions. Zack Sabre Jr. was the best in-ring performer, Walter was the weakest, but you know we are trying to build up Nagata Walter a lot in Japan, which is why Sabre Jr. pinned Nagata in this match. Defence number two of the IWGP Tag Team Championships, Suzuki Goon continues to hold both tag titles. <laughs> this is the showcase match. It's dub it's New Japan versus All Elite Wrestling. And it's Minoru Suzuki versus Orange Cassidy, a match which we were promised on WrestleMania weekend. We never got though. But we're getting it now. And Minoru Suzuki defeats Orange Cassidy in 20 minutes 46 with a sleeper hold. After a good, good, great wrestling match. Decent reaction from the crowd. 82 rating for Suzuki, 64 for Cassidy. Both guys have ground of public support, and Cassidy's in amazing form. I don't recognise that one. The Midas touch attribute, which makes sense. Everything he touches turns to gold. Gets a 73 rating, though, this time round. Then we get the junior heavyweight tag team title, junior heavyweight singles title, even. As Pac defeats Will Ospreay in 25-50 with a shooting star leg drop. It's a big victory for Pac, and it's a big defeat for Osprey. This is the, I think this is the first time in a long time Osprey has challenged for the junior heavyweight title and not won it. Which does mean does show just how competitive the top of the junior heavyweight title division is being. Because like Pac's getting an 86, we're going to have Hiromu back soon. Osprey's out there with a in the 90s. This is a phenomenal division now. Next up, we get our the one of our marquee singles matches, as in singles action, because no titles on the line, but Kazuchika Rokada defeats Shingo Takagi in 28 minutes and 4 seconds with the Rainmaker, gets a 90 rated segment. It's phenomenal stuff from Okada and Takagi. Okada gets a 96 in ring performance, Takagi an 81, which is phenomenal stuff for both of these guys' positions in the card. And a 90 is a great match to have on a card. Especially in the mid card like this is. And in a match which probably would have been better if I hadn't forgotten once again to deal with Walter and Nui, I'll be honest. 
I haven't dealt, I haven't been on this save in a while. I haven't been on this save in a few days. The last few episodes have been pre-booked like a week in advance because I've been focusing on Football Manager. But Tanahashi makes Sonata tap out to a Texas Cloverleaf to make his first defence of the Intercontinental Championship. Gets an 82 overall. Tanahashi at his age to still get a 96. Is he even, is he declining yet? No decline. Look at that. He's got no decline. Look at that. That's amazing. 82 overall. And the main event. Oh, whoa. The, oh. In, oh. I am, I'm actually speechless. In a match which had some sensational wrestling and fantastic heat, the Golden Lovers drew with Jay White and Kenta in 30 minute time limit draw in a 99 rated segment. That's insane. The Golden Lovers versus the Bullet Club gets a 99 rated segment. Of course, Ibushi is the G1 holder this year, which is great stuff. But 99 rated segment, what does that do to our... Gets us a 95 overall. Well, that's... Only... Horrible. It wasn't as... Didn't have the same um, growth as... As last time, but still, that is a phenomenal way to book a show. God, that was insane. Well, I've been Ben Chapman, and that, well, that was King of Pro Wrestling.